Hey everyone, I'm Sue Ken, and I'm here with Brian. We're the managing partners at Iterative. Today we're talking about how to know if you're the right type of person to start a startup. Brian, maybe a good place to start here is kind of misconceptions. I feel like so many misconceptions with startups and I feel like we spend a lot of our time just like talking about misconceptions, uh, which is helpful for people. I think one of the things that I felt when I started uh, uh, as a founder, and I think when I'm here, a lot of uh, new founders talk about this is people tend to think there's like one type of person that should be a founder and only that type of person can be successful, um, which spoiler alert is like not true, but let's just talk a little bit about that misconception of what people think is the right type of like uh, person to start a startup. I wrote down a couple of um, qualities here that I think are like people just assume like absolutely need to be there and if you're not, you shouldn't start a startup. First one is uh, people feel like you have to be charismatic. Like I think everybody is like, oh my gosh, you have to be the second coming of Steve Jobs. And if you're not, like, <laughs> might as well not not try. Second, you must be technical. I think a lot of people kind of think that a founder needs to be some engineering wonderkin who like went to MIT at like 16 and like whatever. Uh, also not true. And you have to be really ruthless. Like I don't know. There's like I feel like there's like myths and stories floating around of just people who would like fire their grandmother if they like needed to and so they're just like horrible people and they don't care about anyone other than themselves and then maybe the last piece is that they think that like a founder has to be this like zealot true believer who has never doubted themselves or doubted their company at any moment in their entire lives um and so i just think that some a lot of times people just think it's these things so all founders have to be super charismatic really technical ruthless and like a true believer but maybe i'll pause there any other qualities you would add to the list of things people typically think a founder needs to be that you're kind of like that's kind of just like not true i mean i feel like there's a couple come to mind but i feel like they're pretty close to yours mm. okay. um so the first one is confidence um mm. so charismatic confidence just kind of like you're pretty similar just like yeah. true believer yep. um one thing that i hear a lot is um the like fake it till you make it thing uh yeah, yeah. and so <laughs> I, I don't know just confidence comes to mind uh on this one another one that comes to mind is um uh just like a natural leader um because yeah. people need to like gravitate towards you right they need to align all that kind of stuff um again like similar to the ones that you have and then maybe the last one is this um the idea that you have to be very decisive oh, uh okay. so yeah make decisions quickly turn on a dime, that type of thing. Like, and maybe the decisiveness just to like blow that out a little bit is like, I think some people assume that in order to be a startup founder, you have to be decisive like all the time. It's like, you know what to do at any kind of like moment. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody comes to you and is like, what should we do about this? And you're like, we should do this. Like, and yeah, I feel like sometimes people think it's like magic. Like, oh, this person just like always knows what to do. Um, and so if you don't have that skill. Um, and, you know, I think for us, these are all kind of like we... Brian and I know a fair bit of kind of like founders who are quite successful and like Brian, I, I don't think I know anybody that has all of these things. Like the, the, I don't know 100%. a single person. Not, I mean, I, I'm other, not even like yeah. half, not even like 80%. Like it's just like not true. Um, where do you I feel like I'm at 90%. <laughs> yeah, okay. Which one do you think you don't have? None. None. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wow. You are a true believer. A true believer. <laughs> where do you think that misconceptions like come from for you? Like, like, where do you think, like, why do people get this into their head? I think the, I think the reason is, um, you just hear the best stories. Yeah. Uh, and so when people, uh, um, write books, movies, like all that kind of stuff, right? The exposure that you have is just the best movie, or not the best movies, the best, uh, uh, parts maybe. Yeah. Uh, of kind of like being a founder and you'd never hear the 99%, which is how bad it is, how quickly pe people need to grow and learn and be self-aware. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like the, the stories that you hear about and a lot of times in media and books and now like TV shows and interviews and podcasts and all that, it's like interviewing the like one person who is the absolute best at this and then you're like, you think everybody is like this, right? So it's like, I don't know, you read some Steve Jobs book about how he has this reality distortion field and you're like, oh my gosh, every founder has this like reality distortion field. No, it was just Steve Jobs. He's literally the only person that like had that. Uh, and there's a lot of other successful people who like don't have that, right? Or you hear about Elon Musk and like his like work ethic and how insane he is about stuff. And it's like, it's just Elon. Like only Elon has that piece. And again, there's like a lot of other stuff. I, I think the founder I always think about who, actually, Brian, I'd be curious. Um, the founder that I think about who is least like the stereotypes of founders 
is Evan Williams for me, who is the co-founder of Blogger and Twitter and now Medium. Because from everything that I've heard and read about him, he's like quite soft-spoken. He kind of does mostly listening in meetings. Like he's, I don't think he's, I don't, I, I've never met him. I don't think he's particularly charismatic. I've never heard any stories of him being like that ruthless. I feel like he has a lot of doubt and I, maybe he's technical, but like not in any kind of like significant kind of like capacity. And so I think to me, like Evan Williams is the like anti kind of like stereotypical kind of founder, but like obviously incredibly successful and has like done really well and is like very well respected. Yeah. Any, I, I, anybody for you? Uh, Okay, that's a much harder question. I uh, no, but I'm gonna comment on the uh, Ev one. So yeah. I feel like Ev uh, gets a lot of credit because um, he's obsessed with yes. uh, with one thing, which is the medium that you kind of like do blogging in, or you do um, I yeah. don't know medium uh, in. And so maybe the thing that comes to mind is for sure no one has all these traits but even at the beginning i feel like you founders often have one trait they're kind of like quite strong in yep. i don't know maybe I, i'm going to steal your things you can like i think the i think the thing that um you're looking for uh is a person that's obsessed right with like one particular thing mm. uh and so they they like very naturally i use the word spiky right they very naturally there's like one thing that's like very spiky or unique about them it could be charisma it could be like passion it could be one of could these things whatever. right it could be technical but there's something that's like wow this person really stands out in this one aspect so we talked about misconceptions around kind of like being cares being second coming of steve jobs being some engineering wonderkin being super ruthless delusional borderline delusional kind of like true believer as like misconceptions of what a founder needs to be i think you and i have come out and said hey look there's nobody that's all of these things there are some people that are one of these things but certainly not all of these things and if you believe that you need to be all these things to start a company you will never start a company frankly all the people that started companies are not these things let's talk about a uh, maybe a list that you and i have that are qualities that we actually think are useful to have as a founder and i i I, we have them down in the sheet as like must have, but I sometimes like I sometimes debate where I'm just like, ah, should we say must have? Because I don't want to be in the realm where somebody's sitting here listening to this. We say some quality and they don't think they have that, and then they don't think they're like capable of starting a company because of it. And I just I, I just don't want entrepreneurship to be exclusionary like that. So just to set this up for people, I think this is a list where, that Brian and I uh, put together that is like. It'd be very good for you to have these skills. They are close to must have, but we have another section after this about like what you can kind of like do. And maybe Brian, we can talk about kind of like if you don't have these right off the bat or you don't think you have these, like what can you do to kind of like build these? Because I think a lot of these you can actually kind of like work on. Um, so let's go through the qualities first and then we can talk about what you can kind of like do for them. Um, Brian, I'll go through kind of this list here yeah. and talk about it and then I I'm curious what your reaction is. Um, yeah. So. Number one, the first quality uh, that I think is kind of like a must have here is the resilience part. I think if there's any non-negotiable must have on the list, this is probably it. If you're not resilient, I think you're just not going to survive as a founder. You're like and going to end up quitting and that kind of thing. So I think more important than being like some delusional true believer, I think just being resilient is kind of like really important. And actually, Brian, now that I think about it, Elon's superpower is actually probably resiliency. Um, like... He's, probably, he's just gone through so much kind of like stuff. Um, so I think resilience is the first must have for me. The second piece here is curiosity. Um, this one I think would not show up on most people's list if they were thinking about it. Like I think most of our listeners are like resilience. Okay, I buy it. Curiosity, I don't know if they would like think about this. I don't know about you, but like I don't think I've met a founder who isn't really curious. And the reason why this makes it on my list is as a founder, you are kind of observing the world and kind of being like, the world isn't the way that it should be. It could be better than this. And I think the only way that you can make those observations and kind of like come up with solutions and learn about users and all that is like, you have to have, you have to be curious about the world around you and why things work the way that they are. And so 
this made it on the list to me of like curiosity is really important. The third uh, thing on the list uh, here is conviction. Um, I think there's a difference between true believer, which I almost put as like, I, I keep saying it as like delusional, but like conviction is a word that Brian and I use a lot to talk about founders. And conviction is a thing that you build. It's not a thing that you just like blindly have, right? Conviction is a thing that you build um, and you can build it on kind of like what you're working on and what you can kind of do. Um, so my list of kind of three must-haves is resiliency, curiosity, and conviction. Um, Brian, maybe let me pause here and get your reactions to my list. Anything you would add? Anything you disagree with? Don't think I disagree. I'm not sure if there's anything to add. The thought that comes to mind is, I do think these are must-haves, you can. Like, really? do you not? Okay, let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Do you, do you not? I don't know. Uh, no, I, I, look, I mean... <laughs> Title of the section in our document here is must have. So I, kind of, I like kind of feel that they are, but like I, I just want to preface the people because I, I think there's probably a lot of people who are just like, I don't know if I'm resilient, right? It, like in their like heart of hearts. And we'll talk about how to kind of build this, but yeah, these are probably must haves. But Brian, go a little bit deeper. Like, yeah. what is pushing you to be like, like you got to have these. I feel like in order to be successful being a founder, doing a startup, you have to be resilient. That's like, mm -hmm. like a non negotiable. I think you have to be curious, right? And then you have to build conviction over time. And so maybe another way to talk about this is like, if you don't have these things, <laughs> like don't be a founder, right? Like you're you're maybe choosing the wrong path for yourself. I don't know, maybe conviction's the kind of like weird one here because you're kind of like building conviction of your product or service over time. But if you're the first two, if you're not resilient, if you're not like curious about finding a solution to like a very big problem, like consistently, and you find yourself just kind of like, I don't know, getting tired, <laughs> right? You're like, if you have to spend too much energy pushing yourself uh, to be resilient or to be curious, like maybe that's just not the right thing uh, uh, to do for you. Yeah, and maybe I think we can kind of have two parts here, Brian. Um, maybe one conversation that we have we can have here is like a little bit around like, are there certain types of people you think that should not be founders? Like you're like, oh, yeah. you probably shouldn't be a founder. Like, I think that's like an interesting conversation. And then the second part here is, um, if these are must haves, we can talk about what you can do to kind of like augment or kind of like develop these things in yourself or put yourself in situations where you can kind of be successful. But Brian, do you, do you believe, and I'm kind of debating whether I believe it or not. Do you think there are certain types of people that just should not be founders? Like if you're, if you're like, I don't want to put in the work. Uh, yeah. Being a founder is starting a business, right? Like that that a lot of people will relate to. Like starting a business, you you walked away from your nine to five job and all of a sudden you got a 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. job, right? Seven days a week. And so uh, I think if you're not willing to put in the work, um, think twice uh, about starting a company. Maybe the thing I'll kind of say here is that there's this thing with people where it's kind of like, like there's something wrong if you don't want to like start a company or anything like that. And I think Brian, you and I are both in the camp of like, there's being a founder. Yeah, there's not nothing, everybody. there's nothing like wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, it, and it's, it's less of like, there's a lot of people who could probably be good founders and they just don't want to be. And there's like nothing wrong with that. You don't want to be a founder. Don't be a founder. Right. It's like, I don't know. What's something that I don't want to be. Uh, I, I don't want to be an accountant. And like, Accountants are cool. So you could. <laughs> Are they Brian? They're valuable. <laughs> um, I don't want to be an accountant. And there's like nothing wrong with like not wanting to be an accountant. And there's like no difference between not wanting to be a founder too, right? It's like, that's just not something you want to do, right? Um, and I think there's like some things that I would need to be able to do in order to be a really good accountant. And like, I just don't want to do those things. And so I'm just not an accountant, right? And I think being a founder is kind of like fine. And there's no shame in that. So if you're listening to this and it's just like, hey, this doesn't sound like the thing for me. Cool. No worries, right? Um, I don't think... Not everybody needs to be a founder. Um, so lots of other things here. Um, okay, Brian, let's take these as must-haves. Um, and let's talk to let's talk about the case where there's people who do want to be founders, but maybe are like unsure if they're resilient enough, unsure if they're curious enough. And even if they are sure, what can they do to kind of like develop these things? Um, and I think we're going to get into this later, but Brian, I don't know if we like knew we had all, we probably thought we had all these things when we started out, but like we've had to develop these things. Um, so two things that I put down on the list here is the first obvious uh, thing is you can develop these in yourself. Um, I think of resilience and curiosity and conviction. Conviction, obviously you can kind of like build, but you can actually kind of develop resiliency and you can kind of develop curiosity. Um, the first one here is uh, if you want to develop resiliency, I feel like you become more resilient if you are put in difficult situations and you kind of like 
overcome them and you work on them and that kind of stuff. I think some of the most resilient people that I know, it's not that they're naturally resilient. They just found themselves in difficult situations. They figured out how to get through those situations. And then it kind of snowballs where it's like, oh, I've been in difficult situations before. This is just a thing that I got to figure out. And so they become really resilient because they feel like they have agency. They're like, I can do something about this. And that makes them kind of resilient. And I think you can kind of just develop this uh, in people. And so if you are somebody that's trying to build resiliency, I think you can, I mean, I, I was like kind of like this when I was younger, but like, I think you can kind of test yourself, put yourself in difficult situations and then figure out how to kind of like get through them. And then you can kind of build up a skill of like how to be resilient. Um, Brian, maybe uh, I'll pause here, get your reactions. Um, I'm pretty sure you think resiliency is something you can kind of build up. Any advice for people on how to kind of build up the resiliency? I think with most skills, right? It's all about baby steps, yeah. right? So I think most people walk into it being like, I need 100% conviction or 200% conviction if you're yeah. like a founder. But like, how do you get to 5%, right? Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with like resiliency. Like, yeah. do you need to uh, do you need to be at a place where it's like 200 people are depending on you, you can't raise the next round, and yeah. so you need to go say sorry to everyone? Like, you don't need to do that yet, yeah. right? Like, work on the first, like, um, I don't know, nobody is going to buy your product except for your mom, and you, you have that kind of like failure, <laughs> I don't know, episode, yeah. and you're like, can I handle this? I would even maybe go even more baby step, right? I feel like the first part of resiliency is just like, go tell somebody about your idea and that you're thinking about doing this. And like, they may just tell you it's stupid. And like, that's literally the first step of being more resilient is like you handle the first rejection. There's going to be so many more yeah. rejections, but like, that's like a dumb first step, but it's a first step, right? So it like, yeah. you can slowly kind of build that up in your appetite for kind of like this. So I think there's that uh, piece of it. Um, and then I think you can kind of like develop uh, curiosity too. I think one of the surprising things that I've kind of like, uh, observed the kind of in my life is the more I learn things, the more curious I become about things. Like Brian, you're like, we were joking about this before. You're like a musician, right? And you're kind of like into classical music and that kind of stuff. I don't know how to appreciate classical music. And it's partly because I don't know anything about classical music, but it's like jazz recently. It's like, I've learned more about jazz. Like I've like watched jazz documentaries and I kind of listened to about it. And I kind of be become more curious about it. So curiosity is not this innate ability. I think you can actually kind of like spur curiosity on by just like taking, again, baby steps of just kind of like learning a little bit more about it. Um, any kind of like advice for people on curiosity here? I don't know if this is good advice or not. It, it just might be applicable to me. Um, I don't think about developing curiosity. I think about um, finding something you're curious about. Ah, yeah. uh, and so yeah. I think the thing that's interesting for me is like oftentimes when I talk to founders and they're like, I don't know what to do. I'm just like, go look at stuff. And you like, you'll naturally every single day be yeah. like, do I want to spend more time on this or do I want to spend more time on looking at something else? Yeah. Uh, and so just the act of kind of like going like searching, I think is uh, interesting. Yeah, and maybe yeah. that's a good point with curiosity. It's like, uh, you're obviously gonna be more curious about some things than other things, right? And if you can find something that you're curious about and kind of do a startup route, you're like, you're just like, you have a leg up on kind of everything, right? And then even within that, you can also then develop more curiosity on something. So um, you can kind of tackle it both ways. Developing conviction, I think, is like a pretty straightforward thing. But Brian, maybe we won't kind of spend too much time here, but developing conviction is like, you should, when you kind of are starting to work on a startup or a problem space or whatever, you don't know much about it and you probably don't have that much conviction because you don't know much about it. And so building conviction is just like, it's kind of what validation is when people talk about validating in a startup. It's just building conviction that this is a good idea. It's learning about the problem, talking to users, trying to get a better understanding on it. And the more you understand something, the more you have conviction around kind of what your opinion is and have a better understanding. So this is like a pretty straightforward thing, but validation is basically this. You can obviously develop these things in yourself, but I think a lot of the things that you and I think about is, um, you almost want to think about it in terms of like a founding team. So the other way to develop a lot of these things is find somebody else who has some of these things in abundance that like maybe you don't have. And so if Brian isn't very resilient and I'm very resilient, then like Brian should come like work with me because then like if we're thinking about quitting, I'm less likely to quit. And so Brian can kind of like lean on my resiliency. And if Brian is more curious than I am, then like Brian will kind of like naturally ask all these questions. And so I think you can develop these qualities in yourself. And then it's also helpful to find somebody to work with who has uh, these qualities in kind of abundance that maybe you don't have. And then you guys kind of like offset yourself. You can also then develop the qualities a little bit more because, uh, you know, again, if Brian is not that resilient and I am, Brian can learn about resiliency kind of like through me and I can learn about curiosity through himself. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, 
Okay, let's wrap it up here, Brian. As always, please subscribe and like and share this video. We hope you found this video helpful. Um, and remember, there's no single right type of person, but apparently there are some like must-have qualities, and so uh, you can work <laughs> on those uh, before you do. Um, if you're currently a founder and you're working on something, please apply to Iterative. All the links are in the description box. Thanks for watching. Hashtag help June make her OKRs, accomplish her OKRs. I'm just saying that every time now. Thanks, everybody.